All right, today's job is gonna be to rotate the tires on the Forerunner because I've been long overdue for that. And I'm also gonna clean up a little bit of the suspension after the oil spraying. And I think I'm probably gonna knock out the engine bay quick too. But in order to get that thing uh, off the ground to rotate the tires, we need to get it in here. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to put some front wheels back on the MR2 here. I ended up buying new tires for the MR2 finally to replace the 13 year old ones that were on there. And I just went with some Sumitomo, I think they're HTRs or something like that. I don't know if they're any good or not, but uh, it's pretty much all I can get my hands on right now. This is such a hard to find size. Well, it looks like the new tires have uh, solved my shake that I had in my steering wheel on the highway. So we're going to call that problem solved. That's enough of that though. Let's uh, get back on the forerunner here. So my next order of business, I'm going to clean up this engine bay. I've neglected this for years now. It looks like crap. So we got to sort this out. All right guys, I've already shown how I do engine bays many times on this channel, so I'm not gonna get real into depth on this. I think I already explained it, the whole process on that Acura MGX that I just worked on in a recent video. Now on the Forerunner, the only thing I covered up was just the wiring for my light bars, just because I don't really trust the, the uh, Chinese made fuse holders and relays and stuff like that to be perfectly waterproof, so I just kind of cover those up with plastic. As for the rest of the bay, uh, I don't care, I just got it wet. It's, it's a Toyota 4 people submerge these things. We're, we're gonna be okay with a garden hose, boys. Obviously I'm not spraying the water directly into the alternator or directly into the fuse boxes and stuff, but for the most part, just sprinkling it to get the, the area wet and rinse off some of the loose dust, totally safe, totally fine. You don't have to worry about it. Like usual, I'm just uh, spraying it down with Meguiar Super Degreaser. Uh, in this case, yeah, the engine bay was really dirty, but it was just dirt and dust. It's not like there was a bunch of oil leaks to clean up or really nasty stuff. So uh, just a regular degreaser like this that you would use for detailing is going to be the trick just fine. Again, this is diluted uh, 4 to 1, I believe, which is the stronger ratio for the wire super degreaser. And then I'm just using my brushes from my wheel bucket that I would normally use on wheels and, and fender liners and stuff like that. And just going over whatever seems to fit. And it's not rocket science here. If you're trying to reach something, try one brush. If it doesn't work, try a different shape brush. Just basically try to touch on everything you can get at, especially on the top sections of the engine bay. That's the stuff you're gonna see, so. Uh, I didn't worry very much about getting down into the inner wheel wells and stuff down there because number one, again, you're, you're hardly ever gonna see down there. Number two, uh, this thing was oil sprayed and that stuff gets sprayed down with oil for a reason. And I would much rather have the oil there protecting those areas from rust than have it all squeaky clean and show quality. This is not a show vehicle by any means. I mean, you can see that there's uh, some rusty bolt heads and stuff like that in there. This is a, a winter driven daily driver, so we gotta keep things in check here. In my case, again, my own vehicle, I'm more concerned with, with function over form on this. Uh, if somebody asked me to make their engine base spotless, then yeah, I'm going to have a different strategy probably. But on this thing, I'm more concerned with keeping it from rusting right through and ending up with a pile of dust where I used to have my 400 parts, so... Definitely not going for show quality, but as you'll see, it's still going to look really nice when it's done. So I think it's kind of a, a good compromise in between perfection and uh, kind of a real-world result. So I've gone through the whole engine bay like that. I like to split it up kind of into three sections. I do the left side and then the center and then the right side. And I rinse it off in between every side just to keep the degreaser from drying on the surface. You don't want that to happen if you can avoid it. 
So I did one final rinse over the whole area, and then as usual, I grab the leaf blower and just blow off all the loose standing water off of the entire engine bay. It doesn't take very long, this, this thing pushes a lot of air, and uh, it's quick and easy. Once I've done that then, I always just reach in, fire up the engine, let it warm up to operating temperature just to rattle any any pooled up water from anywhere, get the, the vibrations to free up any water that might still be hiding in different places. And uh, it'll help to evaporate any leftover water as well too, it heats it up. Now we got a nice clean engine bay. All right, now the engine's nice and clean, or as clean as I'm gonna get it. I'm not, you might've noticed I didn't bother getting up into the inside of the hood and stuff like that. Uh, number one, because I just got it oil sprayed, so it's all covered in oil and goop and all those little holes. And it's gonna be a pain to clean all that up. Number two, I kinda wanna leave it there. That's part of the whole purpose of oil spraying it. Yeah, it's dirty and ugly, but it's gonna protect it from rusting in there, which I think the hoods are kinda susceptible on these forerunners for rust. Uh, and number three, this is my own truck for once. So I don't have any customers to try and uh, impress or do a proper job. If I'm okay with leaving it dirty, well, it's nobody else's business. So I'm just gonna come in here now. I just got a water-based dressing. And I'm just gonna spray down the whole all the black plastics in here. Just like this. Alright, well I gotta fill up that bottle. Here's the finished product. Looks a lot better than it did before, that's for sure. Still not perfect, I mean this is a winter driven SUV that's got over 200,000 kilometers on it, so there's a lot of little uh, bolt heads and stuff that are kind of rusty looking, but Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Good enough for me. This piece here, we're gonna deal with this later, along with the wiper cowl. I'm gonna be coating that with g Technic C4, which I tested the first time I did this thing, so I'm gonna redo that. Gonna be redoing that one again. Alright, now we can take a look at how the wheel wells are looking. And things are looking pretty good ever since it's been oil sprayed actually. It's nice and black. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm not going to bother doing a whole lot of cleaning in here just because uh, it looks alright. One thing, I'm going to wipe the oil, the oil spraying off of this part of the coil over just because that's visible in the wheel well. And I always wipe that down whenever I clean the wheels when I wash it. So I don't need oil on that and it's just going to make it kind of get gross and have grime built up on it if I leave it on there. Fender liners, I'm just going to clean these up when I have everything together when I'm uh, doing the C4 and stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll address that stuff later on. Uh, this brake caliper has been replaced since I painted all the other ones black. So I'm going to have to touch this up to make that one match the others. Probably not going to film that because, I mean, you've probably seen a goof use a paintbrush before. One other thing worth noting is, uh, speaking of goofs, for the guy that's so sure that my body mounts are chopped on this thing before I bought it from the middle-aged lawyer woman that was the original owner, yeah, they look pretty well intact to me. So the good news is, not much work to do inside the wheel wells here. I'm just going to clean up the wheels themselves really good, uh, do a fresh coat of C5 on them, and uh, button this sucker back up together. And we'll call that done. Same thing back here in the rear wheel well. These, uh, the Fox shocks are holding up pretty good considering they're, uh, what about three years old now? Three salty winters? Not bad. Uh, I did ceramic coat these when I did the wheels though, so that definitely made them easier to clean up and less likely for all the, the dirt and grime to stick to. But yeah, I'm happy with how those are holding up. Those still look pretty good in there. Same idea with the front, we're just going to leave the inner fender liners for later on. We can clean those up anytime, it's easy, it's not like the wheels in the way. So since I was taking the wheels off already anyways, I figured this is a great time to get them cleaned up and, and redo the ceramic coating on the faces of them. So I started kind of on the working from the outside in. Um, 
I kind of think about things a little bit differently when I am going to be dealing with a ceramic coating just because you always want to have everything as clean as possible. So in this case I started with the tires first, just thinking that any leftover degreasers or any grime that comes off the tire, I want to be washing the wheel itself off afterwards to get all that off that may have traveled over onto the wheel before I try and coat it. Probably not the end of the world which order you do it in, but it's just that, that works for me. And as usual, Meguiar Super Degreaser on the tires. These were a little bit dirty, I haven't really dealt with them for a little while. And then for the actual wheels themselves, I normally I'll just use soapy water because they have been ceramic coated with t Technic C5 and I've never had the need for using any kind of wheel cleaner or anything strong. Uh, and that's for the last, I guess, over two and a half years. So ceramic coating your wheels, man, it's, it's definitely no joke. It definitely makes life easier if you want to keep things looked after. In this case though I did use an all-purpose cleaner just as a stronger cleaner for the, the only reason being I'm going to be recoating them and I want to make sure they're as clean as possible before that. And I also did one extra step that I wouldn't normally do and that's spraying an iron and pollock remover on here. This is the stuff that when it comes into contact with brake dust and things like that it turns red and it looks cool and runs off the surface. Everybody thinks that they're making their wheels cleaner than a regular wheel cleaner. Whether that's the case, that's not really for me to say, but uh, again, only because I'm doing a ceramic coating on these, that's the only reason I'm using a product like that. 99% of the time, I don't even bother with it. Next, we got to get these things dry, so uh, I could have just used a leaf blower or compressed air or something, but I had the mini master blaster there just sitting there, so I thought, oh, I'll hook it up and use this. Uh, my main concern is just I want to get all of the water off of these wheels before I attempt to coat them just because you do not want your coating coming in contact with water when you're applying it. That's just not going to be good. So I blew them dry, I propped them up just so they're not just water and just pooling into the, the cracks or around the edge of the wheel and tire. And I kind of moved them around a little bit too and blew them dry a few times just to make them get in from all angles. Just, again, you want to get all of the water off of them. And I was kind of pressed for time and I would be coating these pretty much immediately after washing them. Best case scenario would be to clean them up first and have them sit outside in the sun to really dry out or something before you even think about ceramic coating them. But uh, again, I'm very rarely working in ideal conditions. <laughs> if, I, if I could justify getting a shop to work in, I'd be able to follow the rules by the book a little bit more. And I'm sure that'll be coming soon enough. But uh, for now, I just gotta kind of roll with the punches. And the, the rules in the detailing world are not as firm as a lot of people make you believe. You can, uh, sometimes you just gotta do whatever you gotta do to get the job done, and it's not the end of the world if things aren't just perfect. So I wiped the wheels down with panel wipe from G-Technic. Again, you can just use regular isopropyl alcohol mixed with water if you want to. I'm kind of a fan of sticking with the products from the same product line, even though I know it doesn't really matter that much, but it just kind of gives me peace of mind knowing that I'm using their prep products before I apply their coating. That's really all there is to that. And now, like I said, I'm just gonna redo the coating on the face of these wheels. I always reach in and like every other wash, I'll reach in with a longer brush and clean out the inner barrels. So it's not like they have a whole lot of brake dust accumulating on them for a long period of time. And to be brutally honest, I was just too lazy to coat the inner barrels. <laughs> it's my own vehicle, guys. I get to do what I want. So I just did the faces and on these uh, bead looks, not bead locks, but bead looks, it's a little bit more intricate trying to get around the the bolts that are around the, the lip of the wheel and uh, that was enough work for me so I just thought I'd... I'm using the applicator that D-Technic supplies with uh, C5 it's just like a link free kind of a cotton thing kind of the right size to fit into all the little areas of the wheel around the spokes and all that and this is I always find wheel coatings and, and trim coatings as well they're easier to apply than doing the ceramic coatings on your paint because you're not really removing excess product afterwards. You're just kind of, you're, you're still coming in with a towel after you've wiped it on, but it's really just a really quick, kind of a light buff just to make sure everything is level, but you're not inspecting every square inch of them to make sure that you have no high spots and something like that. It, this stuff is a lot more forgiving. If you wipe it on with an even coat, then you're gonna have very little to have to buff off afterwards. So if you stay consistent right from the beginning, then it just kind of makes life easier. So I went through all the spokes and around the spokes and I did the, the lip where the, 
the wannabe B block bullets are. I kind of just just roughly squeeze in between them, and then I just kind of uh, I just kind of wipe around the actual bolts themselves. And if you look at these up close, you'll see these wheels are now. Uh, I believe I've had them through three salty Canadian winters. And yeah, those bolts are stainless steel on this model of method wheel, but if you look at them, they're like brand new still. No rust whatsoever. And the first time I coated these, I did the same thing and just kind of wiped the coating over top of them as well. Whether that made a difference on how long they've lasted looking this way, I don't know. I think it's more of a case of the hardware being stainless steel than anything else, but it certainly doesn't hurt to protect them a little bit extra. So I kind of take that extra step of wiping them down with the coating. And then after I've done the entire wheel all in one sitting, I just came back with a towel and uh, just lightly buffed off any excess that might be sitting anywhere uh, or any area that it looks like I may have missed. If you have kind of a bit of product built up onto the towel, you can kind of almost smear it into a different area that you think you still need to touch just to kind of push it to where it needs to be. Obviously the longer that you wait to do this, it's going to be harder, the, the coating will be curing at that point, so you want to kind of do this somewhat soon. But I wasn't just breaking it down into tiny sections and then wiping it and doing anything like that. I just did the entire wheel in one shot. So here's a quick after shot. We've got the wheels nice and cleaned. Nice fresh layer of G-Technic C5 on them. The tires are clean but ugly. They're stained. They get mud on them, but we'll address them later. All right, well, it's starting to get dark now, but we've got the wheels back on. I'm just going to drop this thing back down on the ground, and we're going to call that finished. So the next episode, we're going to be tackling the paint correction and the ceramic coatings on the body. So uh, stick around for that. But I think that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.